Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Lumix Lounge. I'm here with my good friend, Mr. William Ennis. In this session, we're going to be talking about wedding photography. Specifically, we're going to dive in some of the topics around the business of wedding photography and how William is using mirrorless technology to become a, either a better photographer or a better business person slash man. Hey man, how you doing? Good to see you again. It's good to see you too. You're always well dressed, you know? You're like the rock star photographer. I have to compete. Hey, you know, well you got to kick it up a couple notches. <laughs> I'm going to work on that. <laughs> All right, let's, let's dive right into this. So wedding photography, we've been talking to, during the show, we've been talking to uh, events photographers, fine artists, um, you know, commercial photographers, all down the gamut. You're the first wedding photographer that we talked to, ironically, and we're at a PPA event, okay. right? So let's start from the mirrorless side of things. You and I talked a little bit before the session in that mirrorless wedding photography is essentially just wedding photography. It's the same thing, you're just using a different tool. How has it, has it changed the way that you shoot it all by, by the... It does, for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, it's lighter and smaller, mm -hmm. so I feel a lot better at, after the wedding. So yeah. I don't Your need back a, feels better? I don't need a massage and a hot tub because it's, I can bring more gear with me in a smaller space. Yeah. And then the uh, features with the built-in 4K video and 4K photo... Yeah. sort of opens up a whole new world of doing some new things. So you're, actually, could, you're, you're using 4K video? I am. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put the uh, GH4 when the bride's walking down the aisle. Mm -hmm. I'll set it up, pick a focus point, and have her coming down the aisle. And now I can either use that in a slideshow after, or I can pull still photos out and get the right moment. Maybe That's when, interesting. Because that's one question that I've had. Because I've talked to um, fashion photographers that shoot models that have been experimenting with 4K and doing the frame extraction thing. Um, talk to action or, or volume sports or volume mm -hmm. photographers that are experimenting with that. You're the first wedding photographer that I've heard that's kind of doing that next generation thing. I'm doing that and I'm also doing it in engagement sessions. It's really cool. Um, I have a presentation here tomorrow and I'm going to show this slideshow. It was a Christmas themed engagement session mm -hmm. and uh, the clients brought, it was in Los Angeles so we didn't have much snow so we brought fake snow. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they're blowing this styrofoam snow. Yeah. And uh, we did it with the 4K photo, and I was able to extract stills out of that, and mix it in with the video in the slideshow. So, no, as a business, are you are you are you still in the experimental phase with that, or is, are you actually marketing that? To I your am clients? marketing it. I and actually. How do you have, say? What do you say to them? I just basically have two engagement sessions. I have one that's say uh, six hundred dollars, and I have one that's nine hundred. Mm -hmm. And you just mention in there, it's in brackets that it includes video, and they they always inquire, what does that mean? Then you get a chance to explain it to them and maybe show them an example on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So that's changing. That's changing. And, and changing sort of the profit that you can make, right? Chain, yes. It's, you know, it, it, it adds new products that you're able to sell and market the clients. Yeah. And again, differentiate yourself, hopefully, from the competition. Yeah. So let's, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the business of wedding photography, you know. So, yeah, the mirrorless things enable you to not have that backache after, <laughs> after a long day and that sort of thing. Um, but when you... Like we, we have your website up here, and it's at innisphotography.com, right? Yes. So when we were talking before we started this, your website, you outsource a lot of stuff. I like do. You outsource the design of your site, the logo, all that stuff. I do. What's your, what's your methodology behind that? Because a lot of photographers are like, you know, I'm an artist. Everything has to have my fingerprint on it. That's you know? funny. That's what I'm talking on tomorrow. So I tell people, photographers, they should have two rates. They should have a shooting rate, whatever that is, 300, 350 an hour, whatever you want to use. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have like what I call the regular work rate. And yeah. you have to figure out what your own number is. I came up with a number of $75 an hour. So what I do is I, try, I, I put everything up against that $75 an hour. Can I do it cheaper? If not, out it goes. So uh, editing, I sub out all my color correction, exposure correction. And at $75 an hour, if it's going to take you 10 hours to edit a wedding, that's $750. Yeah. But if I can get it done for $250, first of all, it's cheaper. Second of all, opportunity costs. I'm getting those 10 hours back. Exactly. And, you know, people say you can spend it with your family or go to the beach. I say you should spend that 10 hours marketing and build your business. Right. Yeah, and putting it back into exactly. the business. Well, give me some other examples of outsourcing. So we talked about the, you know, using, what are you using for your website here? Actually, I'm just using WordPress. Nice. Yeah. So, but my logo, I wanted a new logo, sort of my, my older logo was just a... Um, was just a font, mm -hmm. and a friend of mine, I went to his presentation, and his famous quote was, a font is not a logo, so he cost me money, but <laughs> I said, all right, time for a new logo. Instead of trying to design it myself, I used a service called 99designs. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other ones, I think there's one called Hatchwise, mm -hmm. and basically these services, you put up a prize of $300 or $400, 
you sort of write a description what you want and graphic artists start designing logos and then the, the key is to comment on their designs mm -hmm. I like it I don't like it I like the color I like the shape and then you'll get more designs and ultimately you're gonna get maybe two three hundred different designs Wow! so and then you and pick one and you that, pick one and they, they get, get the, the prize and they send you the files yeah wow, wow. easy yeah that's cool so as far as the overall structure of your business, is it just you? Is it you and your wife? Or, you know, how does that? How does no, the structure? I'm, work? I'm pretty well a one-man show, and that's yeah. another reason why I subcontract. Mm -hmm. So just being a one-man show, I do do my own accounting. Yeah, I, uh, which I hate. So what, what are you using for accounting? QuickBooks. QuickBooks. Okay. I have a love-hate relationship with it. <laughs> I think most people do, but yeah. uh, but I keep my accounting simple. I do have an accountant who does my taxes and yeah. things. But um, I, being a one-man show, I, last year I shot 35 weddings. Wow. And I'm on track to probably do that or better this year. So being a one-man show, wedding day I bring people. I have second shooters, sure. assistants, but yeah. everything else I do myself. That's crazy. So one-man show, 35-ish weddings a year. So you're you're doing pretty well. You're um, in the top percentile, I'm right? staying busy. Yeah. yeah. So what about portraiture and that sort of thing? So you said you mentioned the engagement shoots. Are you doing it's very straight, little? Straight, no, very no, little. No, no I, kids, babies. No kids, no babies, no, dogs, no animals. No but unfortunately, these days you get dogs in weddings, right? Yeah, yeah. So last week I had to get down on the ground to get this picture of the dog with the bride and groom in the back, and the dog's licking my face, and the things you do to get a shot. A big corgi, but uh, yeah. I try to avoid kids and dogs and families. To be honest, <laughs> I leave awesome. that to my friends to shoot. Yeah, yeah. But did you have kids and dogs though? I do have kids and dogs. I have both. <laughs> you so, still yeah. want to photograph them. <laughs> Even my grandkids run when they see the camera. That's awesome. Yeah. You're a grandfather. Look at I that. am a Congratulations. grandfather. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's switch. So back to the wedding day. So you, you mentioned that second shooter. How do you work with the second shooter? How do you find your second shooters? How do you manage them during the wedding day to make sure they're getting what you need? Okay. Well, the first thing that I do is I think I pay them well because I want them to be loyal to me. Yeah. Um, it's not a sexist comment, but I prefer using women second shooters because I feel they have a different eye than men do. Men yeah. tend to be very technical. Women seem to be more feely. And it's a different perspective than what you totally. would have. Totally. Right. Um, I try to use people that have their own wedding business, but maybe are only shooting 10 weddings a year. Yeah. So I have three I use on a regular basis, and every 12 weeks I send them a list for the next quarter, what weddings I have, and they email me back what dates they're available, and, and then I try to share the love to give them all a little bit of work. Yeah. Um, and we make sure we sync our cameras so everything is in perfect time when you sync so the, the, the clocks right? yeah what I actually do is I email them a website the night before the wedding I use the standard website so everybody's clocks are synced yeah and then by using again subcontracting color correction even if they're using a different camera system than me the color correction service will make sure that all the files no matter where they come from are very very close in color and exposure. now what is, so tell me about that so the, the color correction service I know there's a couple of them out there where you can send your hard drive to, and they what do they do? I for don't you? even do that these days. I'm using a company called Photographers Edit. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been around quite a while, and mm -hmm. then when Lightroom came out with Smart Previews, so when I load my final selection of images, because I don't do my culling or anything in Lightroom, it's too yeah. slow. Yeah. But when I load my select my keepers into Lightroom, I check the little box that says Smart Previews. Yeah. Create smart previews, and then what I do is I zip the catalog file. The whole catalog. The whole, but not my whole, because I keep a different catalog for every job. Okay. So this is what makes it easy. You take the catalog file, smart preview, you zip it together, you send it off using a service like WeTransfer, mm -hmm. one of those services. Mm -hmm. The photographers edit, and about a week later, they just email me back a catalog file. It takes like five That's seconds to download. Already done. Click on it. Bam, the five pictures. And this, open. the name of that service again is Photographer's what? Edit. Photographer's Edit. Yes. Okay. Dot com. Very cool. Wow. And what does that cost? It costs twenty three cents an image. Wow. So does by that costing twenty three cents an image, does that throttle you when you're out there shooting? No, because I have a no, because I use photo um um well, man, I'm having a blanking out here. Photo Mechanic yep. is yep. the software I use for culling because it loads raw files at lightning speed. So you're not dumping everything you shot at the wedding Never. to them and saying, hey, fix no. it for me? No. You, you're giving I them the thumbs I edit it down to are... approximately, I usually deliver around 800 images to my clients. Okay. So we may come back with 4,000, 5,000 images, uh, but I can get that down to 800 in about an hour. And what's the final deliverable to the to the client? Because these days people are, you know, the the... the Current and upcoming generation is all digital, right? I have a couple. I, just, I still try to promote albums. Yeah. Uh, a lot of my clients do get albums. A lot of people that only want digital. Mm -hmm. um, I still, what I tell them is I'll give them a special deal on an album if they order within 12 months. Because most people are sort of worried about the budget of their wedding. Yeah. And often about two out of three will come back and order an album. And so it's an upsell for me. 
how does that proofing piece work, though? You know, I've, I've always been curious about that, how different wedding photographers, some, some folks say, you know, you have to sit down with the client and do the hard sell. I don't. I do know? that up front. I want that done, I want that out of the way before the wedding. So what, I try to get it like? up front. Uh, take, me, take me through the process. Well, it's just a sales presentation. Mm -hmm. So you try well, to get... Start, fr start from, I'm on the phone, I call you up, hey, William, I'm getting married. Hey, no. William, I'm getting married. Nobody phones anymore. Fabric. Okay. Hey, William, I'm getting married. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I know, that's better. better. <laughs> I know. Even email these days. But yeah. um, I'm the firm believer that, uh, and I think it's proven, he who answers first, 60% gets the job. Yeah. So as soon as I get a lead, I am on it. So I'm, I'm responding back to them with an email. I tell them my starting prices in the email, and then I have a nice PDF pricing sheet, a couple of pages, that I send them, and that pre-qualifies them. Mm -hmm. So right away they know if I'm in their budget or not. Sure. Yep. Yet everybody still comes and tells me they're on a budget. This is yeah, the way of, of course, the world today. Of course. So then the, the, the next goal is not necessarily to book them, which would be nice, but the next goal is to get a face-to-face -face meeting. Yeah. So I have a meeting area where I meet clients. In your home? No. I have an actual area where a uh, place that I rent. Oh, office. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, I, um, it, 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 it's called a wedding and event studio, so there's mm -hmm. a wedding planner that uses it, which is sort of oh, nice. Great. We help each other and yeah. refer. Um, and then you have a meeting, and then at that point you try to sell a higher package with an album. Yep. So I like to get it all wrapped up then. Although they could, uh, you know, add a parent album after or whatever, but it's just nicer to get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. I have friends who do the sales presentation technique. Yeah. You got to invite them back in. Right. You got to show them 800 images. It may take an hour or two. You're trying to sell them large wall prints. Sometimes they buy, sometimes they don't. There's two schools of thought. I'm just, I like to keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. So, that's how so I, you get them in there, you, they, they agree on whatever package that you're gonna, you know, that they want, that, yes. that fits their particular yes. wedding. They agree on that. Do, they, do you take payment at that time? I do. I, um, I use an electronic service called um, ShootCube, which mm -hmm. is my contracts. It's all electronic signature. There's no physical signature anymore. Yep. And I work it's in called Shoot Q. Shoot Q. Yep. There's a couple of other services. And that's the letter Q. Shoot letter Q, Q. yes. Yep. And then um, I work in third, so a third retainer. Mm -hmm. It's important for photographers to use the word retainer and not deposit. Why is that? Because the deposit is refundable, a retainer is not. I like that. Yeah, so that's an important thing to yes. know. And then I uh, take another payment of 60 days before the wedding and the final third 14 days before. It's really important to be paid in full before the and wedding. And how, how do you get those? Do you have to get... Hey, send me my second retainer. ShootQ know. has an automated email system, so seven days before a it payment's due, it sends it. out. Yeah. And if they don't pay it, what happens? Uh, I, I get on them, yeah. and they have to be paid in full before the wedding day. Okay. All right, so fast forward. All the three payments have come in, so you're fully paid before you even st step I foot am. in there. I and am. Is, are you paid before the engagement shoot, or how does that work? I would not do an engagement shoot without a retainer being paid. Okay, so, so you, you have happy. some money before you Absolutely. go into anything. Yes. So wedding day comes, William's paid, you're happy, you're ready to go, probably already spent the money. You show, you show up at the church. That's the thing, an exit strategy <laughs> from this business. <laughs> you, show, you show up at the church or wherever they're having the wedding, your second shooter's there, so you guys, I would assume you show up a couple hours or at least an hour early? No, or? a typical wedding day is eight to ten hours these days. It's very different from when I got married yeah. in my powder blue tux, speaking of style. Nice. Um, <laughs> so we usually start at a hotel where the bride's getting ready. Yep. And we usually like to spend an hour and a half with the bride getting ready. So we don't sort of come in with guns a blazing shooting. I like to meet the bride's mother and yeah. warm up to everybody and sort of establish some rapport right from the get-go. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to help you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then we start doing like hair and makeup, tail end of hair and makeup. Yeah. And then we ask the bride to have like her dress, her shoes, have all the rings, including the groom's ring, bouquet. We try to get all those details taken care of in the first yeah. hour and a half. Yeah. I encourage uh, all my clients to have a first look to see each other before the actual wedding ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, I hit about 80%. I'd say when people come in the door, 50% don't want to do it, but I'm able to convince at least 30% to do that. Yeah. It makes it for a so much better day. Yep, yep. So then you proceed through the day, you get all the shots, you shoot the wedding, your second shooter. Are you and the second shooter in contact during the day? Or yeah, how? but my second shooter, so we, they're going back to that, I've worked with them so long, it's like I will be with a long lens, I'll look over and they're shooting wide. It's just yeah. this mental telepathy thing that we're just so comfortable with each other. Yeah. Or sometimes they disappear and I go, where were you? And they're like always getting detailed shots of the reception hall. They just, we, we just sort of now, it's a ballet, but it works so really it, well. So there's no digital or you're not texting back and forth or anything? Saying, I've seen hey, photographers go, go, go. wear the walkie-talkie yeah, things. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. No, you're not I, doing any of that? No, I don't okay. Do that. Okay, so fast forward, end of the day, you're done. What happens then? You say, hey, second shooter, give me your cards. That's what right. Yeah. I go home, 
pour myself a little scotch, and I download all. Wait, the, what kind of scotch? Uh, ben Fittich or something. Maybe uh, my son over there buys me good stuff every now and good, then. So good, the good stuff. The good stuff. Yeah. Eighteen year. Um, so I download the files. Uh, I don't even look at them. That's just a backup download. I just put it on a hard drive, put the hard drive in the safe. I don't even look at it. Yeah. The next day is when it really starts. I go to my studio with the cards, download them using Photo Mechanic again, mm -hmm. and that's when I call them. I go from four or 5,000 to 800 photos. Uh, I'm fearless when I do it. And people hate when I say this, but when you're going through the family photos, yeah. the first time you get to one where everybody's looking at the camera and everybody's happy, select that one and don't even look at the rest of the family nice. photos. Because what happens is people have a tendency to go, okay, I'll take this one. Well, this one's pretty good. Let me go back and look at this one. And they'll take a minute. You, you, yeah. you can't take a minute. You're going through 4,000 images. you got to be quick. Right, right. Okay, so you do your calling. You create that Lightroom library. You zip it up. Yep. You, you I would assume, digitally transfer it over to Photographer's I Edit. I do, yes. Right, so it moves over to Photographer's Edit. They send it back to you, all color corrected, according to your preferences. Yes. Then what? Um, I export it over Light, uh, Lightroom using another program called Perfectly Clear. Mm -hmm. uh, Perfectly Clear is a plugin you can use for Lightroom. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy. You can smooth skin, you can make faces thinner, you can put catch lights in eyes, remove bags, yeah, I've seen all as you export. But I will say you got to use it in small doses because yeah. it can be really overdone. And they are, by the way, a Canadian company. They are a Canadian company, mm -hmm. Calgary, Alberta. <laughs> yeah, let's give them a little plug. Yep. Um, so I export that, and that's my proofs. Mm -hmm. I go through them all. It takes me an hour. I go through them again to make sure photographer's edit has done a good job. Yeah. And at that point, I'll tag 20 or 30 images that I call my selects. Yeah. Those are my favorites. I export all the images into a folder called proofs. That's what the client's going to get. Then those 30, I will work on additional work in Photoshop. Okay. So I will do darkening, lightening, add some detail. Okay. Uh, use a program maybe like Alien Skin or Nick to give it a little bit more of a photographic feel. Yeah. And sort of create maybe a little bit more art pieces or stuff that I'm going to show on my web, on my blog, Facebook, things like that. So the the, the proofs that you send to the clients. How do those go to the client? How they do go you... on a USB drive. So they, they just get raw JPEGs? They get raw JPEGs. They're just straight JPEGs. And now I, I've changed my pricing where I have medium resolution and high resolution. I'm trying to get a little extra money. Yeah. So the medium resolution files are about 2,500 pixels. Yeah. I tell them, you can do 8 by 10s But then I have large artwork hanging on the wall, and I tell them they can't do the large artwork with those files. But to upgrade to the high resolution files is like $350. But two, low two res is fine for... Yeah, Pinterest but it's, it's a mental Facebook thing. Most people that. want the high res, so they'll pay the extra. Are people. they watermarked? The ones that they are not watermarked. No, sir. So, okay, so what's the purpose of the proofs? Like, how are they selecting the ones that they like? If well, you're just giving them a folder full of images. The proofs. Um, there's a couple of ways they can select. Mm -hmm. So maybe we were talking. Let's fast forward to an album. Yeah. So they can either go through the photos on their computer and give me image numbers, mm -hmm. or I use an online gallery service called Shoot Proof. Mm -hmm. So I put a gallery of the 800 images up online. Okay. It's up for about three months, and they can go through those and tag their favorites. Okay. And by tagging their favorites, that's another way for them to identify which ones they want to use to go in the okay. album. Okay, so, so we're at the album now. Let's say, fast forward, they've made their selects. You yes. know their selects out of the proofs that you provided yes. them. Um, you, you know your favorites, and you've retouched. Yes. And you now what? Have they selected an album, and how do they pick which album they want? They haven't done that yet. Okay. So basically what I do is, using that $75 an hour number, mm -hmm. I used to sub out album design. When I first started, I'm a little bit ADD, and when I first started in this business, designing albums could take hours and hours and hours. Yeah. So I quickly learned that that was a process I had to get off my desk. So I subbed out album design. I was paying about, I started at 200 and got it down to about 120 yeah. an album. Then I discovered Fundy Designer. And it is an amazing software. What's it called? Fundy, F-U-N-D-Y, Designer. Okay. And I can design an album in 15 minutes now. It's literally just drag and drop. Wow. And besides that, it creates collages for my blog. Yeah. It'll water, watermark or put your logo on image. It's pretty yeah. awesome software. So I designed the album with their selections. And I upload it using a proofing system where they can go online and actually see the album. Okay. They can sort of flip virtual pages. Virtually. They yeah. can tag images and go, hey, switch these two, or tag this one and ask, can you make that bigger, or whatever. So we go through a few iterations. Yep. In my contract, it says you can go through it twice, but I never hold anybody to that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Once they've solidified the design, I invite them back into my studio, and that's where we finalize the album design. And you pick the covers and they all that? They pick the different colors, or they can upgrade and get an option of maybe a photo on the cover. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they want to buy... Do you have samples in I your I have office? tons of samples. Okay. When I got married, the albums were black or white. I think I have like 100 swatches that you can yeah. choose from these yeah. days. Pretty amazing. And that's the end at that point. So there's no upsell? Like, okay. I try to upsell the album. I try to sell parent albums because okay. there's really... You can. You got to make it easy for them to buy. Yeah. So by keeping parent albums at a lower price point, all the work is done. Yeah. It has. It's a clone album. So yeah. the design is done. The retouching is. It's, it's just the cost profit, of it. Yes. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they're in your office, they've picked it, you, the album's laid out, they're happy, they're ready to see it, they pick the cover and the color and all that stuff. Yes. Now what? You send it off to where? I send it off to an album company. And who, who do you send it to? I'm using a couple. I'm, I'm using H&H &H Color Lab to do my standard books. Yeah. And then I have another company, uh, Graphy Studio, who has these books called The Look Book. Young Gra Book. It's Graphy called the Young Studio. Yeah, it's called they're The here, Young right? Book. I think they're here. They're not here at this No, they're show. not here. Okay. No. So those albums are made in Italy, so that's always a good selling point. Yeah. And they're so different from each other, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. So I order an album, it takes about six weeks for them to get their book, mm -hmm. and then I deliver the book, and then... So it comes to you, you don't have it shipped directly to the client? I do not, unless they're across the country. Or okay, so it comes to you, you QA it, make sure it's perfect. Wrap it up really nice. You put any, like, marketing materials? Like a uh, yeah, I do, I have a couple anything? of ideas, and my wife helps me with the packaging and make it, like, really nice with yeah. twine and craft paper. Very cool. Yeah. Very very cool. Okay, and then you call them up and that's a third meeting, or do you ship it to them? Um, usually they come and pick it up. Okay. Like I said, unless they're living in New York or somewhere else, then, yeah. then, okay. then I'll ship it to them. And, and then I'm many, done. How many like out-of-the-area weddings do you do? Are most of your weddings local to you, or do you do most them around the Most are local, but I've done a couple in New York and Austin. I have one coming up in Cabo. So. Okay. Not okay. that I'm a destination wedding, wedding but, photographer, but yeah. That if they want to fly you out there, you it's know. pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so then that's it. It's over after that. That's right? it. They get they go off. They have babies, and they hire another photographer to photograph the babies. That's. I it. refer somebody. Yeah, you yeah. refer somebody for that. Yeah. Wow, that's great. So what? Okay, business wise, on that whole flow, time wise. Well, that's a great question. Yeah. How, what are we looking at here? I really wish it was six months. Yeah. Uh, I have, some clients are slackers these days. I've had people take four years to get a wedding album. Four years. That's but my you're record. paid up front, though. I'm so, paid up front. So you're not waiting four years for the check. And then, unfortunately, some people get divorced and never come back for an album. Right. But four years, and finally I convinced her just to let me design it and do it and ship it to her to get it off my plate. I think what's changed in this business is when I first started, and then people who shot film would deliver physical proofs, mm -hmm. four by sixes. And because yeah. of the expense, people would only deliver like 300. Right. So it was easy to lay them out on a table and go, I want this in my album and yeah. this in my album. Yeah. Now with 800 or 900 digital files and you got to open each one or go through a system online proofing and I just think it's harder. And yeah. after people get married, life happens, right? Right. You know, careers, babies, family, whatever, and it sort of gets kicked to the side a little bit. Wow. Wow. Okay, so then price-wise, you mentioned your hourly rate, so 75 bucks. That's kind of what you're... You, that's your benchmark for your time for these tasks that you don't want for to be tasks, doing. Not for, for shooting, tasks, not for shooting, but for tasks. So what yes. are we looking at ballpark for all-in on a wedding? Like, if, what, I want, what, if we want what, to hire you and it's a medium-sized wedding, how with much? With an album, medium-sized with an album would be between forty-five and fifty-five hundred dollars And how did you come to that number? Uh, it's very important that you don't get caught in the trap that you check out all your competition and try to price yourself right. just below. Yep. You really need to understand what your costs are. Mm -hmm. And if you buy something, you should be selling it for about 3.3 .3 to 3.5 times the cost. Mm -hmm. So if you buy an album from an album company at $300, it's really not $300. Yeah. You also have to figure out what it took you to retouch those photos, right. how long it took you, and that's cost that you need to build in. Mm -hmm. So maybe your final cost is really $700 for that album. Mm -hmm. Then you should be selling that album for $2,100 to $2,500. And that's the a la carte price. Obviously with packages, the more you give, the more you discount to try to push them to a higher package. Yeah. Well, this is helpful. So we've gone through the whole process, right? So from soup to nuts, even how you get your website built all the way through to final delivery mm -hmm. of the album and pricing and all that. So for the photographers that are watching this out there that are like, you know what, hey, I want to get into this wedding photography thing. I feel like I have the chops. I got the gear. I understand it. What do you? What advice would you give for the for those folks that are looking to jump into the business? I think they uh, should second shoot some weddings, which is very difficult um, because I get five emails a week of people wanting to second shoot with me. And when I first started, I tried to help a lot of people or assistants. I get a lot of eighteen-year-old kids, and 
sometimes somebody just hits a right tone with me and you give them a chance and they sure. turn out to be good. They need to be persistent. You're going to hear a lot of no's, but eventually somebody will, and you should really maybe offer to do it for free. Mm -hmm. I call them tag-alongs. So sometimes I'll bring people along, tell them, hey, stay out of my way. Yeah and watch, you can take some pictures and sort of like build a little bit of a portfolio and really get to know the, the timing of a wedding. Because yeah. weddings have a certain ebb and flow to them. And yeah. You really need to sort of be ahead of the curve knowing what's going to happen next to be in the right place to get the right image. How many, how many weddings do you think you've photographed so far? I don't know, I've been doing it eight years, so hundreds and hundreds. Hundreds and hundreds, so yeah. you're, you're pretty much an expert, I think. I may be getting there a little bit. <laughs> but you know, that's the great thing about this, you never really become a sensei. Right. There's always something to learn. That's why I love coming to these Everything shows. Everything keeps changing. Everything right? keeps changing. There's always something new, a new better way of doing something, mm -hmm. a new piece of software, new gear. Yeah. You really have to stay up on it. So what's, what's next for you? What's next for William Innes in the photography world? Well, I, love, I don't know if you know, but I also speak on travel photography. So oh. I tell people... I, I didn't know that. Ah, right? I have a program on travel photography. So um, I like shooting weddings so I can travel. Yeah. So last year we went to Morocco and we went to uh, Prague, two different trips and photographed there. And didn't pay a dime to go, right? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> we shouldn't talk about that. But, um, it's pretty cool how it works. Yeah. And then this year we're going to do Cambodia, I think. That's and, crazy. So I try to squeeze it. Like a weekend I don't have a wedding. I take nine days and, and go. So that's, that's for awesome. me. That's awesome. So your website is Innes Photography, I-N-N-E-S Photography.com? Photography. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Awesome. It's a great conversation. Great being here. Always a great conversation talking Thank to you. Thank you, Frederick. All right, that's it for this session here at the Lumix Lounge. You can check out this video and all of our other videos at lumixlounge.com. My name is Frederick Johnson. We'll see you in the next one.